After a two-year battle with illness, my sister passed away. I'm exhausted from taking care of my wife. After saying that, he entrusted me with the responsibility of being the chief mourner. I can't bear to see my wife being buried. He sobbed and ran out of the funeral hall just before the cremation. However, when I chased after my brother-in-law, I encountered an unbelievable situation. My name is Olivia. I grew up in a family of three with my mother and sister. My father passed away in an accident before I was born, and my mother raised my sister and me single-handedly. Even my mother passed away from an illness when I was 16 years old. My sister, who is four years older, started working after graduating high school and became like a mother to me after our mother's death. Olivia, you're smart, so go to college. There's the money that mom left us, so don't worry about tuition fees. Just focus on your studies. She said that and sent me to college without indulging herself. She was truly a kind sister, and I cannot thank her enough. As soon as I graduated from college and got a job, my sister decided to get married. After living together for so long, it was really sad to separate from my sister, but I was happy to see her looking so happy. My sister gave birth to a sweet daughter and the three of them built a warm family. I'm past, and now I'm 40 years old. My sister turned 44. I'm like my sister. I got too absorbed in work, and I'm still single. That day, I was on my way back to the office after finishing my lunch break. While waiting for the traffic light at an intersection, my smartphone rang. It was a call from my brother-in-law, which was rare. Hello, brother-in-law? What's up, Olivia? Is this a good time? Yeah, I'm outside, so it's noisy. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Listen, my wife passed away. What? My mind went blank and my feet stopped moving. The traffic light turned green. Even though it turned green, I stood frozen on the sidewalk and Pasersby glanced at me as they walked past. You kidding, right? I finally replied to my brother-in-law. Yesterday, her condition suddenly worsened. It happened so quickly. My sister had been in poor health for about two years, going in and out of the hospital. I contacted my sister and visited her as much as I could, but recently, I couldn't go to see her because I was busy with work. I had heard from her emails that she had been receiving, that she had been receiving home care recently. She mentioned that a home care worker came twice a week. My health has stabilized, so don't worry. Seeing those words in my sister's email, I convinced myself that she was doing well and recovering at home. But was that really the case? My sister was so kind, maybe she had sent me those words to not make me worry. I deeply regretted not being able to visit her due to my busy work schedule. Thanks to my sister, I was able to graduate from college. Because of that, I was able to join the company I had hoped for. But still, I couldn't help but think that I wasn't able to do anything for my sister when she was suffering the most. Those thoughts kept swirling in my head. Come out, Bert Satam Bolivia, are you listening? I heard my brother-in-law's voice from my smartphone. Oh right, I was on a call. Oh, I'm sorry, brother-in-law. I understand. You suddenly heard about your sister's death. I have a favor to ask you, Olivia. Yeah, I'll do whatever I can. That means a lot. I appreciate it. Actually, I am so exhausted. Huh. I didn't know how to respond to my brother-in-law's unexpected request. I've been taking care of her for a long time, and I'm really worn out. Besides, it's too hard for me to handle the funeral. You're strong. Briskers, Olivia, please. I'm begging you. Well, if you think I'm suitable, that's great. She would be happy if you were the chief mourner. Our daughter is still 16 and a minor, so we can't ask her. I remember that my brother-in-law's parents have already passed away, and he's an only child. If my brother-in-law can't fulfill the role of the chief mourner, then it would be up to me. Thank you, Olivia. I've already had most of the arrangements made with the funeral home. Just follow their instructions, and it'll be fine. In this unexpected turn of events, I was confused, but I just wanted to see my sister as soon as possible. I returned to the office, explained the situation to my boss, and hurried to my sister's house. I arrived at my sister's house and rang the doorbell. Hello. It was my niece, Claire, who answered. Claire. It's me, Olivia. Aunt Olivia. The door opened and Claire, with her eyes red from crying, came out. Aunt Claire. I heard from your dad. It's true, isn't it? Mom is inside. Honey, come in. It had been a while since I last visited my sister's house. When was the last time I came here? I never expected that the next time I would visit would be to say goodbye to my sister. Say goodbye to my sister. I entered the room and my sister was lying on the bed, her face covered with a white cloth. 
necklace, I gently removed the white cloth, revealing my sister's face as if she were peacefully sleeping. If I called out to her, it felt like she would open her eyes any moment now. Eyes is open your eyes. I called out to my sister while crying, but she didn't open her eyes. She had really passed away. Hey, Kat Claire, where's your dad? I asked Claire, who had been standing next to me, crying together as she watched the meeting between me and my sister. Dad said he can't bear to stay in this house anymore. He's going to book a hotel and stay there tonight. He told me that Aunt Olivia will come soon, so I should wait with Mom. And here this is the contact information for the funeral home. I was surprised by my brother-in-law's actions when he heard Claire's story. Even if he was exhausted from taking care of my sister, leaving his beloved wife behind, let alone his own daughter, and staying alone in a hotel. It seemed a bit heartless of my brother-in-law, but I think taking care of someone for two years must have been tough. Perhaps due to the exhaustion and shock, my brother-in-law ended up doing things that I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't blame him. What I could do was to prepare and send off my sister so that she could rest in peace. I suppressed my grief and contacted the funeral home. The funeral was scheduled for two days later, according to the explanation from the funeral home. It was my sister's wish to have only family and a limited number of people send her off. Oven while struggling with her illness, she cared about what happened after she was gone. How strong was my sister, really? Surely, taking on the role of a mother figure for me made her more responsible than necessary. I wished she could have lived much longer, especially considering the hardships she faced when she was young. Until the day of the funeral, I tried calling my brother-in-law several times, but he didn't answer the phone. Just as I was worrying, I finally received an email from my brother-in-law. But surprised he Olivia. I'm sorry for causing you worry. I'll attend the funeral tomorrow. I felt relieved that my brother-in-law had replied and a weight was lifted off my chest. And the day of the funeral arrived, urging Claire, and I headed to the funeral hall in the car carrying my sister's coffin. My brother-in-law was going to come directly from the hotel to the funeral hall. As I looked up at the sky through the car window, there wasn't a single cloud in sight. That's in my heart, it was pouring rain with tears, but the sky felt like my sister was saying, Olivia, don't be sad. Well, I was lost in the memories of my sister, we arrived at the funeral hall. At the entrance, there was a sign with my sister's name written on it. X, it's wish really is a farewell home. I felt an indescribable mix of emotions. My sister's coffin was brought into the hall and placed in rest. During the time before the funeral began, Claire and I spoke words of memories to our sleeping sister inside the coffin. Then, my brother-in-law appeared. That's to Claire Olivia. Are you okay, brother-in-law? Yeah, I'm really sorry for leaving everything to you. Burke's actualations. It's okay. Thank you so much for taking care of my sister for such a long time. And the funeral began. And Mimi, my sister's family, and my sister's close friends came to attend the funeral. It may not have been a grand funeral, but everyone got the chance to say their goodbyes to my sister. It may sound strange to say it was a funeral befitting my sister, but that's how I felt. And when the preparations were being made for the burial, an incident occurred. Oh, I can't bear it anymore. My wife, my wife being buried. I can't take it anymore. The people around us widened their eyes, wondering what was happening. Brother-in-law, please come down. Daddy, beers to be tell? Feeling concerned. One of the staff members from the funeral hall came over, but my brother-in-law shouted, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving, and stormed out of the funeral hall. Wait, oui, brother, brother-in-law. I wanted to chase after him, but I was the main mourner. I couldn't leave this place. I decided to leave my brother-in-law to the staff at the funeral hall. During the time my sister's cremation was taking place, Eau Claire and I quietly waited in the waiting room. Claire said she needed to use the restroom and left her seat. They come to think of it. Where is my brother-in-law? Perhaps it was due to the grief and exhaustion, but I had no energy to leave my seat to go and find him, so I called my brother-in-law instead. But he didn't answer the phone. I hope brother-in-law is okay. Maybe I should send him a message. With that thought in mind, I opened the email app on my smartphone. Just as I was about to type, Aunt Olivia Claire returned. She had a troubled look on her face. Claire, what's wrong? Yeah, Dad was here. Oh, so brother-in-law was still at the funeral hall. That's a relief. I hope he comes back. No, he went home. He was with the home care worker. Dad was smiling. What do you mean? Just near the restroom, there was a woman who came for mom's home care. She was wearing morning clothes, so I didn't recognize her at first. But then dad went up to her, and I overheard their conversation while hiding. 
The woman said something about going to the hospital and then going on a trip. What? What's that about? Brother-in-law, what do you mean by going on a trip? Could it be that he's having an affair with the home care worker? Even though my sister was still fighting her illness, there's no way that could be true, right? But even the arrangements for this funeral were strange, asking me to be the main mourner and all. I remember my sister's regular hospital was near this funeral hall. I'm sorry. Then Claire, I'll be right back. Seeing that, I dashed out of the funeral hall towards the hospital. Huss, huss, huss. When I arrived at the hospital, my brother-in-law was standing at the entrance. I hid behind a pillar, hoping not to be seen by him. After a while, a woman came out of the hospital's entrance. Sorry for the wait. Let's go, let's go. Saying that the woman linked arms with my brother-in-law. Nevertheless, your acting was top-notch. I couldn't bear it anymore. My wife turning into ashes. Please stop. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't have been able to leave that place, right? But is it okay for you to go on a trip during your wife's funeral? Oh, it's fine. I'm supposed to be at the hotel, and everything else will be taken care of by my sister-in-law. She's single and proactive, so I can rely on her. So what on earth? Even though my sister is gone, my brother-in-law is happily chatting with another woman. To show me something like this on the day I bid farewell to my precious sister, I will never ever forgive him. I managed to suppress my anger and captured the scene of my brother-in-law and the woman on my smartphone. And just as the two of them were about to get in the car, I called out, Brother-in-law. Puh, dull. Olivia, what are you doing here? The woman next to him also had a forced smile on her face. Well, why don't you tell me? What are you doing here, brother-in-law? Wait, I couldn't bear to witness my wife's burial. I felt sick and came to the hospital. I see. That's why I thought you might have left the funeral hall and gone to the hospital, so I came here to check on you. In-law's face, frozen shock, unable to say anything. Well, the cremation will be over soon. Let's go back to the funeral hall. Oh, by the way, you should come with us. I said that and glared at the nurse. Oh no, even if I have to drag her, I'll take her with us. I'm serious. You should come too. Ah, I'm okay. She replied with a dragged expression in the car on the way back to the funeral hall. It felt like we were in the midst of a funeral. When we arrived at the funeral hall, the Claire was waiting anxiously. That's see, Claire. I'm sorry for leaving you alone. Aunt Olivia, they're about to call us soon. Oh, damned. Oh, yeah, Claire. My brother-in-law replied with watery eyes. And after the burial was over, my brother-in-law, the Claire myself, and the friends who cherished my sister said our goodbyes to her quietly... I had the nurse wait outside. I couldn't allow the mistress to be present while we said our goodbyes. I didn't want my brother-in-law to handle them either, but I couldn't cause a scene here. Stay calm, stay calm. I reassured myself and managed to get through the situation. The funeral is finally over. But the real challenge lies ahead. We headed to my sister's house in my brother-in-law's car. Claire's sitting in the front seat, and the nurse and I are in the back seat. The car is silent. Once we arrived at my sister's house, I decided to confront my brother-in-law and the nurse right away. But before that, I asked Claire, What about you? Since it's going to be an adult conversation, do you want to wait in your room? I'll book you, Tark. I'll stay with you. Aunt Olivia, I want to hear it too. Claire saw her father leaving the funeral home with a smile on his face. It's too late to hide the truth from her now. My brother-in-law and the nurse sat in the living room, looking small and defeated. Brother-in-law, please explain what's going on. Well, you see, she started coming as a home nurse, and things just developed from there. Even though my sister was suffering from her illness, what on earth are you doing, brother-in-law? I raised my voice, and my brother-in-law stiffened, unable to say anything. He said you stayed at the hotel because you were tired, but it was really to meet this woman, wasn't it? Well, I was really exhausted. So, what's wrong with finding some comfort? What? That doesn't justify doing something like this. I slammed my hand on the table. My brother-in-law froze in place, unable to say a word in the face of my intensity. At that moment, Beauclair, who had been observing the situation all along, spoke up. I was the one taking care of mom most of the time. What do you mean? I turned to Claire. Well, daddy's daddy is only home when the nurse comes. And he leaves with her when she goes. Claire, what are you saying? But it's the truth, right? That, to my surprise, my brother-in-law couldn't say anything in response to his daughter's input. Now it's the nurse's turn. And you, after doing something like this, do you really think you can get away with it? I wonder what my face looks like now. I'd like to see it in a mirror.
This must be the face of pure rage. Oh, I am truly sorry. No one can stop my momentum anymore. It's surprising to see myself, who barely raises my voice, pursuing the other person with such a forceful tone. I never knew I had this side to me. Maybe my sister is lending me her strength. Brother-in-law crying inconsolably before the cremation was all an act, right? And going on a trip during my sister's funeral. What are you really thinking? I will never forgive you. However, the nurse made a final desperate attempt. Sister-in-law, you say this and that, but where is the evidence? Diane, this should be enough evidence. I declared as I thrust the photo I took at the hospital earlier. Unclear as day, it shows my brother-in-law and the nurse walking arm in arm, laughing. Uh, was like, the nurse couldn't say anything anymore? Rightly, apologized to my sister. I shouted at them with the loudest voice I had all day. Well, okay, okay. I get it. They said as my brother-in-law and the nurse quietly stood in front of my sister's picture and apologized. After that, I took the appropriate steps to report my brother-in-law's actions with the nurse to the hospital that she worked. The nurse was severely reprimanded by the hospital and ultimately fired. The nurse's reputation quickly spread to other hospitals, making it difficult for her to find another job. And now, I am living with Claire. If I were to find out that my father was secretly involved with a nurse while my mother was battling an illness, it would be natural for me to not want to live together. But no matter what kind of father he is, Claire still is child. Although my brother-in-law made a mistake, he is also the person my sister chose to marry. I have no intention of forcibly separating Claire from my brother-in-law. How is it? I intended to stay by Claire's side until her feelings settled down. My brother-in-law, of course, broke up with the nurse. It seems he desperately clung to her afterward, saying things like, Don't leave me. Now we can openly be together. Let's get married. Let's get married. But it seems she has completely lost interest in him. Furthermore, they seem to be in a heated dispute over compensation, saying things like, How are you going to make up for getting me fired because of you? And now even Claire has left him, and he seems to have aged considerably. But the other day, when Claire secretly went to check on him, he was kneeling in front of my sister's picture, apologizing. Clay waits for me and cooks dinner when I come home late from work. She also subtly helps with household chores and is truly a good child. Claire, you can take it easy. When I said that, then Claire responded, It's fine. I actually enjoy doing household chores. Maybe I take after mom since she also liked taking care of the house. She smiled as she said that. On one day, while having dinner, Aunt Claire told me something. Hey. On Olivia, you know what? Mom knew about Dad and the nurse. I didn't know how to respond. But you know Mom's body was already weak, so she couldn't do anything herself. But she said Aunt Olivia would take care of it. And it turned out just like she said. Claire said that with a slightly lonely smile. Then, looking at my face, she said, By the way, Aunt Olivia, you were really impressive back then. You were like a demon. It's and burst into laughter. Hey, stop it. As I looked at Claire's smile, I thought that I wanted to support her forever from the bottom of my heart, just like how my sister became a mother figure to me, 